So you've decided on a home charger. Is that the right decision? And which should you choose? I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. In a previous video, we looked at home charging with a humble 3 pin, 13 amp plug, and found that a large number of people really do not need anything more. Well, let's see what you should choose and why there are some novel ideas and surprises and conclusions here. Well, first choice with my strongest recommendation, get your utility company and tariff sorted out before you choose your charger. See, everybody has a different set of circumstances, so don't just accept anything or what your mate says. Uh, my example is a good indicator why. I chose EDF because they offered the ideal tariff for me and my lifestyle. That's rare. My house is mostly empty in the daytime during the week, but was active in the evenings and especially at the weekend. I also did a high mileage. Now, EDF offered a tariff which had 10 hours off peak each evening from 9pm to 7am and all day and all night Saturday and Sunday. Off peak was much less than half price and peak was a crippling plus 40%. But for me, the 10 hours allowed me additional charging, whereas the 6 hours offered by others would often have failed to top the battery right back up overnight. And the house itself was practically empty during peak times. So in reality, I found I was using about 85% of my annual electricity bill off peak and a tiny 15% of peak rates. My bills for four years were incredibly low. So when you're choosing your utility company, make sure you get enough charging time to charge your car to the level you want, whatever you want. But look at your likely usage of peak rates too. You see, if that's too high, you might lose much of what you're saving charging your EV if you use masses of electricity at peak rate. For example, if one partner runs a crash or babysitting service from home during school hours, your peak electricity usage might be very high and the one who drives the EV might only do a very few miles. So get your tariff right first. And that can save you hundreds of pounds a year. Now, for those of you worried, I switched this year. Now, I don't know how it normally goes, but my experience was amazing. See, I already had a charger, so I completed the online questionnaire uh, with my chosen utility company, which was Intelligent Octopus Go. I found that my smart meter, my car and my home charger uh, were all fully compatible. I clicked go ahead on a Tuesday evening and within 10 minutes received an email back saying the switch would be completed on Saturday. It was that quick and simple. And it actually was completed on the Saturday and it was seamless. Apart from there was a delay while they communicated with EDF and with my smart meter, but no action was required from me. Uh, the switch had been completed, but there was a delay of a few days before the app lit up with all the new data. So I'm told that can take up to seven days. So don't be afraid to switch to go and get the best deal. Right, so having found the right tariff, check who else offers a similar tariff but better benefits. So we're now on to chargers. So if the hours and tariff are broadly similar, you might find one company offers a free EV charger. Oh, well, Octopus does, for example, if you choose salary sacrifice. British Gas offers 4p discount, meaning a ridiculous 3.9 pence per kilowatt hour if you choose them and choose one of their hive chargers. That could be worth thousands. The right tariff and a free charger is probably about the best you can expect, unless one also offers free charging for a fixed period. Have a look round, but make sure you're getting what you want. So just to set a definition of a home charger, it is a permanently attached box, normally mounted on a wall, which has a permanent dedicated power supply to it and can output around 7 kilowatts, either through a cable that's already attached, that's called tethered, or using your own cable, that's called untethered. They need to be installed by a suitably qualified and preferably experienced electrician to the latest regulations. So, last minute check, just before you place your order for a charger, do you get a special deal from your utility, like free or half price home charger? If so, that's probably your best deal. Or, 
does your EV dealer offer free charging? Vauxhall, for example, offers a year's free charging when you buy a new Astra or Corsa. Why install a charger and pay to charge at home, even at really, really silly low rates, if you can charge for a year for free? Have a look again in a year's time. Well, finally, you do need to make that choice. Do you have a, ta a cable attached or no cable? And this is usually quite a simple choice. If you can, just go for the tethered, where the cable is permanently attached, because the hassle of getting your own cable out of the boot every single day, uncoiling it, always gets tangled, coiling it up again afterwards every day, that will get you down. I guarantee it. The single reason why not to go for tethered would be if you live in an area where your cable or charger could be abused. Could be the cable would be stolen or the charger would be stolen or could be damaged or a neighbour might nip in when you're at work and plug into your charger. If, if anything like this applies, go untethered. Much simpler. So once you get into charges themselves, the choice is huge and prices equally huge, ranging from about £300 right up to about £1,000. Where do you start? Well, my starting point would always be try and find someone who already has one and ask them for their advice. They should soon tell you if their choice is a contender for you. Also, many electricians have their own favourites, particularly if they've received manufacturers training on a specific brand. And when you look at charges, you'll see names like Zappi, Oma, Rolex, Easy, Podpoint. But when you actually get down and read the list of features, most of the list is just a list of the latest electrical regulations. Super duper earthing widget in line with reg regulation X or double standard regulated balanced output meeting regulation Y. These are all total fluff. You should never charge a, uh, install a home charger that doesn't meet current regulations. Look for real features you can and will use. And most offer a good range of features within the three to five hundred pound range plus installation. So features. Notice one is now offering RGB chase lighting, uh, which means as you plug it in, the front changes different colours depending on the state of charge, showing you when the, uh, the battery will be fully charged. I mean, absolutely, totally useless if your charge is mounted on a sidewall and not visible from inside your house. Do they expect you to sit outside and watch the pretty lights? Well, it might be appreciated if your neighbour can sit outside and look over the fence and watch them. Now, some, others are, uh, some other charges are tailored for use with solar panels and or home batteries. So if, so if you have these, this might be a no-brainer. But even here, your utility company might well offer this facility anyway. And even some cars can do this themselves. So a reality check is needed here. Now, for example, in my case, I ended up with a Tesla car and I bought a Tesla charger and I used the Tesla app. I chose compatibility over price or style or features. They talked to each other perfectly and they told EDF what to do, when to switch on and off the charger. Now, when I switched to Intelligent Octopus Go, I had to override all that. I had to authorise the Octopus app to be in control and virtually disable the car, the charger and my own app to allow Octopus to do its thing. Now, this is not said as a bad thing. It, it all works. But maybe this means that the old singing and dancing charger features will now just shut up and the charger will do what it's told by the utility app. See, at worst, it might end up them all fighting for control of the charging sessions. Luckily, mine still seem to talk to each other quite happily, but that is not always the case. Well, even if fully compatible, I offer a word of caution here. All home chargers will come with some sort of app, guaranteed. All will do the basics, guaranteed. And while the very latest tech connected to the internet of everything might seem like a great idea, I personally have found that once I set the charging parameters, I rarely ever touched them afterwards and that didn't do so for the last four years. I never even bothered to check if it had charged after a few days because, well, it just always did. The only feature I actually miss is the one that none of them offer. 
That is to remind me to plug it in each evening. Or the number of times I, I had thought I was going to go out again and didn't plug it in, or had my arms full of shopping and put it off till later, or it's pouring down and I dashed in. And then I forgot, only to discover at bedtime, or usually once I got into bed, oh, no, I haven't plugged it in. And one thing, feature I really do like is the light on the front to show me it is changing. You see, mine uh, is on the side of the porch and I can see it from the kitchen sink. It's somehow reassuring if the lights show it is charging, but I spend so little time there. Oh, by the way, if I think it should be charging and I see the lights and it shows it isn't, I just check the app. So I don't really need the lights. Well, I certainly wouldn't pay extra for that feature. Well, cannot and will not recommend a brand and model for you, as your needs or electrical layout might be very different. So to simplify matters for you, I would first of all find an electrician. Find one obviously qualified, certified, but one who's experienced in EV charging installations. They aren't all. Then ask them for the best advice for you. They may have a favourite one, they may have an offer on one. Or you could go the other route. The dearest charger that I've seen is the pod point, which is just over or just under a grand, depending whether it's tethered or untethered. Tethered, I think, is 1,069. Uh, untethered is 999. And the reason it's really that expensive is because the price actually includes installation. How many times have you, have you been asked to, uh, have you asked someone to give you a guide price only to find that when they get arrive on site, they find, oh, your specific inf installation is different than I thought, and you're going to need several extras and some additional labor. The pod point approach is really simple. You hand over a grand and you get a working home charger. There's a lot to be said for that simplicity. Well, find the installation, and that could add around a further three hundred to seven hundred pound ish, depending on the complexity of your installation. See, mine is absolutely simple. The meter box, the consumer unit, and the home charger are all within ten feet of each other. Really simple and really cheap. With some houses, you might need extensive cabling and even trenching or external ducting. That will cost more. So once again, ask your electrician for his or her advice. He or she will, ha will be looking for the simplest, quickest installation. Also be aware that some houses still have fuse boxes and will almost certainly be totally incompatible with the latest regulations, which require RCDs or MCPs or fancy earthing or whatever. Sorry, but if that's you, you've got to have upgrade your entire system. No competent, qualified and certified electrician should simply connect a home charger to an old-fashioned fuse box. Well, I hope this has been of help to you. It's difficult to go far wrong, as they're all quite capable chargers and almost all deliver an identical output, which is 230 volts times 32 amps, which is 7.36 kilowatts. Oh yeah, I know, I know you're all shouting at me now, it's 240 volts. No, it isn't. Changed a few years ago, the standard now on the grid is officially 230 volts, but also the total supply to the house has changed. It used to be 240 volts through a 100 amp fuse, which gives you 24 kilowatts, but a local DNO informed me this year that they now work on supplying only 18 kilowatt maximum to each house. I seem to vaguely remember a news article about smart meters throttling our home supply. Well, it seems it might not have been them, it might have been the grid after all. Thanks for watching, I'm Dave.